Good afternoon, chat. How we doing? My name's Scotty D49, and today, as the title says, we're working on some Death Watch Space Marines. Um, cranking some tunes, so if you've got some hobby of your own, jump on. It's going to be a great afternoon. It's nice and chill. Um, so we're going to crack straight into it. Hopefully that works. There we go. How we doing, guys? Hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Um, so you would have seen a couple of weeks back when I was working on Death Watch Captain. Um, there was this guy with his other parts in the background. What we're doing today is we're going to be finishing him off, hopefully. Now I'm just going to edit some stuff. Hopefully it'll allow me to do it. Um, there's just some stuff going on with the camera. I'm probably going to want to zoom in a bit further than it is. Um, and we're going to drop the focus on this guy. To... He's got it on auto. We want it on 40. Oh, no, we want that going. It's not wanting to work. I'm going to have to do it manual. There we go. All right. Apply that. Sick. So that should be a bit better for you guys. It'll mean that I'll have to bring things forward a bit, but that's okay. So this is the dude we're going to be working on today. Um, as you can see, I've already got the base coats done. Um, let's bring this forward a bit. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much blue, black, gold, silver, and that's it. So today, getting the touch-ups done to start with. Um, then we'll go into washes, highlights. Hopefully, um, that'll be him done. Then I've got two more guys to go for this unit. I haven't been doing a lot of painting. Um, I know some of you guys would have maybe tuned in last week and seen my uh, terrain painting. Um, so I, I smashed out two buildings uh, last week in probably about four hours, which is great. Um, so yeah, that's uh, just going to jump on in. So I think we might grab my trusty detail brush and get that guy all spooled up, ready to go. Um, now. And where's my brush for scooping out paint? Make this nice and easy. So I'll be using a multitude of different brushes to get the stuff done that we want to be done. Um, so I'll also be using an insane detail brush when needed as well. I've still got a good detail brush sitting around. So yeah. Ah. Love a good death clock song. I just added these guys to the playlist the other week. And, oh, I forgot how good they were. It's been a long time. Alright, I'm not going to get paint out of this guy yet. I'm going to clean it. Because... There is a massive chunky ring around on it, and I want to get rid of that, or at least some of it. So, but yeah, I hate how the GW pots gunk up like this really easily. So. It is what it is. The only reason I'm doing this now is because the pot itself decided to start pulling it out. And so I'm just using a pair of old clippers that I'm not really too concerned about. Uh, 
So it's right around the top too. Which isn't fun. So... But yeah, hope you guys are having a good Saturday. It closes a bit better now, which is nice. Let's see. Oh, no. I hate it when it does this. Is that my headphone cable gets stuck underneath my chair. Painfully. And then dropping the paint in the rubbish bin I've got hanging on the door there. Yeah. Alright, now we can get painting. Alrighty. Let's get started. Now this is where it gets tricky, is right on this final point down the bottom here. It takes a little bit to get into these things, like obviously I'll be going back over the bronze because I know that that's going to be a thing on this guy. And I'm going to need to do it. But yeah. All right, that's the outside done. Now, this is the next tricky part, the inside. 
So right in that circle, you can probably see it once it decides to focus. Probably that should want to focus. But yeah, it's pretty much right inside there is where I'm looking to paint next. So let's just gotta be very careful. Just getting it in there. And being careful not to get the uh, the bronze, not to get the blue on the bronze too much on that inside as I'm doing this. Might just have a look at this camera. It's not wanting to focus for me, so there must be something going on with it. All right, so hopefully you can see, oh, that might show up a bit closer for you. Yeah, there we go, that's a bit better. I'm sure it doesn't look as grainy for you. Let's just uh, do a quick projection so I can make sure of it. Yeah, cool. So you can see just the blue on that inside, right there. And yeah, so that's the blue done for this guy. Um, just gonna be, I like to save my paint as I go as well. Just so then I'm not, um, you know, losing paint on the actual palette. Or at least save as much as I can. So. Alright. So that's the blue done. Um, it's one of four colours I've got to do on this part. Um, I like sub-assemblies for this reason because I'm, I can go, I can... Touch up one piece, move on to the next one. Touch up the next piece, move on to the next one. Keeps it nice and easy. Um, so we'll do the bronze next. Just because... Actually, we won't. We'll go and we'll do the black. Because that's going right. to... Hey! Well, Kiefer, thanks for the follow, man. Really appreciate it. Alrighty. Oh, this guy has the same problem as the blue. Jeez. Alright. So, just gonna pull this off. Alright. This is why I don't like G-Dub paints. Well, at least the pots, I should say. Uh, so I actually magnetize a lot of my dudes, uh, Lakeifer. Um, so it means that I'm able to do that. So this guy specifically is a Storm Bolt to Storm Shield guy. And so how I've actually done it is I've got the magnet up and in there. If I put it over like that, you can probably see. So the magnet's in there, and then I've also got one on there as well. So that's where it pretty much locks onto the, the, you know, this guy being the right shoulder. So it goes on the right shoulder of the body, and then the gun slots onto the wrist. So that's why it's in sub-assemblies. Um, so I, I have previously not done it, but I've gotten to the point with my painting where I actually prefer doing it in sub-assemblies. It's just a lot cleaner, a lot easier to do. Um in terms of just my process and how I like to paint. Yeah. So it's because Death Watch, you can do take so many different things with them. Um, you know, it, it, I thought, you know, rather than paying what is 60, 60, $65 Australian to getting a, um, you know, kit, you can get it to where it's, you know, maybe and you have to build them all, you get a lot more value out of the kit this way. And getting, but the problem is getting the spare shoulder pads more than anything. 
um, is what I've found. So, but yeah, so thanks for the question, man. Has there been anything you've been working on on your hobby desk? Yeah, nice man. What um which starter set in particular did you get the recruit, the command, the elite? Which one in particular? Nice man, yeah. It's it's a good one. I did jump on um the Indominus box set. Um so yeah, maybe once I get the touch ups done. Cause you've got the in that set from memory, there's Outriders, Assault Intercessors, and a Captain, or a Lieutenant, I can't remember which one. But then you've also got the Necron Warriors, a Lord, or the Royal Warden, and the Destroyers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, so what I might do is um, I'll get the touch-ups done on this guy. If you want to stick around, I can, you know, show you how I put together some of the stuff from, uh, the say, an Assault Intercessor for you. So you can see how, you know, I go through that process, if that had helped. Yeah, for sure, man. So, hopefully these touch-ups won't take too long in this, dude. Um, but I'll definitely, uh, yeah, help you with that, man. Because I know what it's like to, you know, you pick up the starter set and you want to know, you know, how to put things together and, you know, the best way to do things. Um, now, I will warn you in advance my way, having, I've been in this hobby for a long time, so... You know, there'll probably be things that I'll do that you might might and probably want to do straight off the bat, um, just in personal preference, but that's completely fine. Um, so, I can definitely help you and guide you with that, my man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah. So right now I'm just trying to get most of this black covered over the over this arm. Um, that way it's you know unique coat and not overly hard as well. All right, so that black seems to be done from my from where I can see most of it, which is pretty good. So you'll see things are a bit cleaner along there. All right. Whilst that black's drying, all right, should be able to do this hopefully without compromising the metal or the black. Let's pop that on. All right, we're going to do the bronze now. Whilst that black dries, we'll hit it whilst it's um, still. What do you think? I can just quickly adjust my webcam so it's 
bit more across. So I'm a bit more central. That should be a bit better. All right. And maybe angle the TV it's on a bit further. So, sick. Have you thought of uh, which army you're going to go with out of the two? Whether it's going to be uh, the Necrons or the Space Marines? The Keeper? Nice, man. Nice. I've, uh, I've decided to start up Necrons as well with the Indominus set. Um, I've been a Space Marine player for a long time, so I, I've tried a few different armies, but never really found one that really kind of clicked. And so when the Indominus stuff came out for Necrons, I decided that, you know, let's, let's give these guys a crack. One of my mates was selling his half, so I'm like, all right, cool. I can make a 1500 point army out of two halves and it be okay, I suppose. So, but yeah. But yeah, definitely, uh, I did play a game against the new Necrons on Tuesday night, just gone at my local game store, and they were, they were good. Like, some of the stuff they've got pretty nice. I uh, can definitely attest to that, so. I'm keen to not just play with them, but to also play against them. Because they've got, yeah, got some nice things, and they're not too, too tough either. Alright, so we're just going to hit this coat the second time. Now, I just want to be careful that I don't uh, do too much over the, over the blue that I've already touched up. But I also want to hit it in a way that it's going to cover any blue that I've done on a part that I actually want the bronze. So I'm just going to be careful with how much I load the brush up with and just control those bristles in such a way that it does hit that under edge a little bit, but not too much. That looks okay. There's a little, couple little spots that I just need to reintegrate in, but that's all right. That looks good so far for that top edge. Have you thought of what you might want to grab next for your Necrons? Good plan. Very good plan, man. That is one thing I would recommend is work on what you've got and then go from there. Yep, that's fair. <laughs> this uh, this hobby can get expensive and can get expensive fast. Um, and, I, I, and I want to definitely agree with that because I've got boxes and boxes of models that I uh, have not built but I have bought. And so... 
I, this is, you know, the Death Watcher were one of those. I've had them for a few years, and so I'm trying to work through my backlog, as uh, many hobbyists have got. So, so I just switched brush to a, a more finer detail, just so I'm able to have a bit more control when I'm doing this middle piece, because I don't want to go back over this blue again after the bronze. So, almost done the bronze. And there's just probably one spot where I'll touch it up on the inside. I might just go around the rim very carefully. And just touch it up so it, it's um, kind of uniform, but also, you know, there's not blue where the bronze should be, and vice versa. And this is the hardest part on this guy, I'd say. At least for this section of the touch-up. But yeah. So, that should hopefully zoom in, yeah. So that's what it looks like. I've still got to do the, the metal, but it's getting a lot cleaner than it was, which is great. Yeah, thanks, man. So, whilst that dries, oh, no, so I do it as a part of the process um, for my painting. So, what I'll show you now is this is, you know, you'll probably be able to tell um, from the shield that I'm about to show you. So, if you have a look on this guy, hopefully it'll zoom in a bit. So, you can see how there's a bit of silver where the, where's the black, the gold's kind of all over the spot. Um... You know, on the side, the detailing, it's probably not as clean as what you might want it to be. You know, there's some gold where silver should be and such. Um, you know, there's probably some silver where there should be some black or places like that. So, what I've gone through and done is what's called your base coat. So, I've just gone and put a solid layer of paint down on top of everything that I want that particular colour. And so, I haven't been too concerned about whether I... You know, get it over a spot where I want another colour, uh, because I can always go back and do the touch-ups, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, so, it, it's more of a step of just cleaning up, making sure that it's a nice, solid coat of that colour, and the colours aren't where they're not wanted to be. Um, sometimes you will have to, depending on the models, go and touch them up after gameplay, uh, if they fall over, if you chip, if they chip being metal models, or... Um, you know any other damage like you have to glue something back together sometimes plastic glue will, the, the the melting will actually remove some of the paint uh so you might actually have to go back and do that 
The best way to avoid that, though, and I'm only just starting to do this process myself, so I'm a bit guilty of it, is using matte varnish. Um, will help with that, so you won't have to do it as often. All right. Whilst that dries, I'm going to crack open my Indominus box, and I'm going to get out... Um, hopefully, should be... It will either be an intercessor, like an assault intercessor for you, or it'll be a scout. Uh, not a scout, a necro warrior. So I've just got a lot of stuff stuff on top of the box that I have to move to do this though, because well, my hobby room is a little bit of a mess at times, and you know, in a couple of weeks I'm planning on taking some time off work to go through and do some cleaning. But got the box right here. Let's have a look. Alrighty. So I've got the Marines out in another box by looks. Um, so. This guy's a Royal Warden by looks. I'm just going to try and uh, choose one that's going to be helpful for you, man. Um, you know what? Let's grab one. I'm pretty sure this will be for a Necron Warrior. We'll do a Necron Warrior for you. So you're able to see how to put together the Crons because I know you're, you're pretty keen on that. Alrighty. Yep, that, that happens, my man. That does happen. Um, <laughs> so. Alright. Now. Let's find the instructions for this guy. I'll get my paint palette out of the way. Hopefully, I can find one. All right. So. So we need this is confusing as crap. All right, thirty six found one. All right, so start off with I'm not sure if you probably picked up these guys. You want to grab a pair of hobby not uh, hobby clippers. They're gonna allow you to easily clip off some stuff, and it's gonna. It'll have that flat edge, but it's also got the divot. What you want to do is put the flat edge up against the model. Um, so, for example, you want it to be like so. And so you've got it nice and flat when you're taking it off the sprue. And so... There. And so what it'll do is it'll actually mean that you've got very little flash that decides there we go so you'll see there there's very little flash um, left over from the actual where it was attached to the sprue so you want to kind of do that with all your models um, what I'll do is I'll clip off all the pieces and then we'll get about cleaning them um, so that was 36 so then I need Don't want 
the he the shorter range score. So you want the longer range ones for my guys. So we should go with 38A. So. So, there's that arm, then we want B37, it's just going to be somewhere, there it is. that then we need B39 for the torso all right so what you want to do is when you do this I'd highly recommend only doing like clipping off what you need for one model at a time instead of clipping everything off the screw because then you'll have a hard time uh, figuring out what pieces go with which one. Um, all right, so we got that. Then I just want head number 40. Something, just a nice clean Necron head. Nothing too crazy. All right. So those are all the pieces. So as you can see, we've got the torso, the head, um, I know this is probably inverted for you um, as well. So we've got all of those guys. What I might do is just flip it um, so that it makes it a bit easier. Hopefully, how's that for you? Hopefully that should be a bit clearer. Um, so you can see what I'm doing right in front. So you can see that, you know, you've got the gun, the other arm, the torso that'll go on the front, like so, and then the head. So really, it's not going to be that difficult for the next step. I like to use a hobby knife. Some people like to use files, um everyone's got their own preference and what you want to do now is you want to go and you want to clean off all the mold lines so you'll see up here where there's a little bit of flash um, but there's also all those mold lines as well you want to clean those off so they're not visible um, so I find the easiest way is to do it with a hobby knife because you can scrape it off um, by putting your finger against the back of the blade and having a bit more control as to how you do it and just keeping it to where that line is that's just my personal preference some people will prefer to use a file because it, you know you have no risk of stabbing yourself things like that so um that's just you know whatever you decide you want to do personally i always say a hobby knife's a lot easier um, and so it also means that when you've got those bigger pieces of flash you're able to actually get underneath and slice it off rather than having to file for a a bit longer to get that off um, so then we've got now sometimes you might not see where the the uh, mod line is on a particular piece of the model but you can see where it starts beforehand and where it ends after that piece just try and guess where that is um, and you don't want to take off an awful lot so you might see that I'm just cleaning around this little piece where it's, if I bring this out, it'll probably show you a bit better. Um, and so there's that flash along the leg. And you just keep on following it um, right around the body and right around the piece.
and every so often I'll blow on the model to get rid of what's actually there. Now I will also follow it under the base uh, or where it does connect to the base because sometimes that'll actually hinder its actual connection to the base or your ability to do it. So I um, have got a bunch of different files, but this is one of the ones I like the best. Uh, it's got a relatively, it's got a flat side, but then it's also got a rounded side as well that can help get into spots. So, and if anything like doesn't make sense for you, man, whilst I'm going through this, like feel free to stop me, ask questions. Um, yeah, you know, I'm he I'm ha more than happy to help you with this. Now, sometimes you'll get in the hardest spots as well. This is why I also prefer a hobby knife over a um, file because hobby knife will really easily with that sharper point, be able to get into those spots so you can actually clean them up relatively quickly instead of having to find a file that's that small or other things uh, along those lines as well. And of course, there's a guy revving his motorbike outside and I've got the window open for some air. So, but you know, that is what it is. I'd rather not cook in here than, uh, you know, have that <laughs> not be heard. But if it is too loud, just let me know. And I'll, uh, I'll close the window. Okay, cool. <laughs> I wasn't certain. Because <laughs> I, I can hear it through my headphones and I'm not monitoring the audio that's coming through to you guys, so... Uh... All right, so we're getting around. We've done both of the legs. The torso shouldn't take too long, but yeah, as you can see, I'm quite, you know, pedantic. Some might say OCD. Some others might say uh, about cleaning off mold lines. But I have gotten to a point on painting models where I've discovered mold lines, and that's not fun. So I always take my time with this step. Um, it's not something you want to rush. Because um, if you rush, you could miss one. But also, if you rush, then you could also hurt yourself, which you don't want either. Um, but yeah. Hopefully this is all making sense for you so far.
Yeah, yeah. So, generally, they would be, but what you probably want to focus on is the legs have got a lot. And some of the ones that you could see, like, on the spine in there, where I've got my knife right now, in there, you might be able to get into. But some of the more uptight spots, like, in the back here, where I'm about to hit, is probably really hard without a hobby knife. So, if you're able to get your hands on one, um, I wouldn't recommend the Games Workshop one, um, personally. Even though I'm using an older Citadel one. Um... Look at maybe the Army Painter ones, or there's a bunch of different other brands you could go with um, as well. But Army Painter are usually pretty good um, in terms of their hobby knives, and they're not too expensive either, um, from my experience. But yeah, just start like start with getting the most of the uh, wider, like the larger ones first. Um, these models being a bit more push fit as well, you kind of don't have to glue them together um as you've been cleaning your mold lines as well um so it means that you'll be able to at least get them mostly cleaned up and then go back with the knife first yeah yeah 100 percent, man yeah now i have from other people that i know i have heard that putting these guys together in the way that they've been designed with the guns is particularly hard which is what's going to be the next step so i'm just going to slot this guy into his base for now so yeah so that's him started so far on his base so i'll do the other arm first which is the one holding the gun So sometimes I'll also clean something up with a knife and then I'll go back and get it nice and even and flat with the with a file. That's also a good thing to do because it kind of then means it's uniform across that entire surface rather than it could be a bit higher on one side, lower on the other because of the hobby knife and the way you've um, cleaned it up. So yeah, just every so often, give it a blow, get rid of that... Um, the excess that you've been working off the, the model. This isn't too bad. At least the, you know, the mod lines. I remember when they were really bad on Games Workshop models, man. And particular kits will be worse than others. But from what I've seen, a lot of the newer kits are actually really good with the mod lines. They're not massive. They're in, you know, pretty obvious spots so you can clean them up, or they're on relatively hidden spots so you. you if you don't want to, you don't necessarily have to worry about them either. Alright. So there's that arm, which they say to slot in there. So there's that. That's him so far. I forgot that I flipped. Yeah, 
Like, if I do that, yeah. So hopefully that should focus. Yeah. So the arms are already in there. So it's ready to put, clean this guy up and put it on there as well. Yeah, oh, they've gotten, like, I've been playing 40k for at least 10 years now. The models have gotten so much better than they were. Um, like, they, like, previously, uh, they, like, they were alright. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like, they weren't, like, crappy or anything. Like, they were good. You know, they've just gotten a lot better with how they deal with how many pieces are on the sprue. Um, you know, mold lines, all that kind of thing. So you'll notice here that there's a lot of little divots down and up on the gun, and I'm going in and doing those. Sometimes you won't actually see them. So if you don't want to worry about those, go, you know, up to you, man. Like, if, if you want to not worry about the kind of the ones that are hidden away, don't worry about them, um, honestly. Um, but if you want to, then go for it. It's up to personal preference at that point. Now I just need to get a little bit of perspective on where this one. So sometimes you'll have arms that are like this, where you won't actually know where that mold line is until you look at it at the right angle. And that's the hard thing, is that sometimes you won't be able to, with it, to see it without pivoting it around, which is what I had to do. Now, I like to use the closer to the hilt end of the blade um, when I can. And that way it means that, you know, when I'm cutting something, it's like I'm using a sharper part, part of the blade because necessarily that's a part that you won't use much. Whereas you con I, you see I'm constantly using the, the tip of the blade to go around and do stuff. So that's gonna get blunter. Like as you use it, it'll get blunter quicker. Um, Whereas that other end wasn't as blunt. So yeah, it, it's just, you know, another one of those tips where if you can um, to cut off flash or anything and you don't particularly need it to be really precise and clean, use the, you know, further down on the blade um, and just be careful where the, the point's actually going as well. Again, you don't want to stab yourself um, when you're doing this. So, but yeah. And the good thing about the point as well is that I'm able to get inside where that, the arms hold it, the hands holding the gun, and I can actually clean the mold lines that are on there as well. You'll probably have a tough time with the, the little scraper tool, but once you get a hobby knife, you'll be able to get in there and do that as well. Uh, I am down in Canberra. So originally I'm from uh, a place called the Illawarra in, on the New South Wales south coast. Uh, moved down to Canberra for uni uh, and I've just stayed here since. So.
again, getting behind that axe is one of those things about getting the right angle. I like how they've kind of added a bit more detail to it as well now. Because it used to be just a bland, like a halberd axe. But it was just, you know, flat. There wasn't any Necron detailing to it. Whereas now they've added that and it looks a lot better in my opinion because of it. Um, so yeah. Yeah, nice man. I've I've got some relatives over in uh Queens uh not, not Queenstown. Um in Auckland I'm pretty sure. Um but yeah. Been a been a very long time since I've seen them. But yeah, beautiful part of the world, New Zealand. I I would definitely wanna, you know, go over and explore, that's for sure. So Alrighty. So that's done. So now here's the tricky part is putting the gun slot. So I'm actually going to take this out now. I more kept it there to keep it in its spot. So we'll slot this guy in. And then. So that's that guy right there is all good to go. And uh, we'll slot it straight in that slot right there. Cool. All right. So that's that's the guy. Mostly done. This is where the hard part comes in. And I've heard that this is the pain. Is now putting the torso on afterwards. Which is meant to go on like so. And I can't even get in there quite well enough just yet. But we'll clean it up first. That should clean that up. So, Torso is almost done. It's not as not as uh, long as I would have expected. Now, those the wires that are all kind of corrugated or ribbed um, are going to be a bit harder to clean. Um, but I just I don't worry about too much going into the divots of each one. I just go over the right over the top. Um, and yeah, that way, you know, you still get the top ones done. It might seep down into to the lower cracks, but you know, at the end of the day, if someone's looking that close, then, you know, it's either they're, you know, a paint judge or 
you know, they're looking for flaws at that point, which you probably won't end up dealing with for some time. That part's done. We'll, we'll do the... Yeah, yeah. Like, some people can spend hours on this stuff uh, just because, you know, they want to. But when you've got 10 warriors to build, um, you know, and you want to get them done quickly, you know, or you want to, you know, get them in done in, you know, relatively good time, you know, it's not too much work. So now I'm just going around the head. It's just one of those things that it's a bit finicky. You probably can't see too much of what I'm doing, but yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a bit more zen in terms of just you know it's cathartic, it's relaxing. You know, you get the job done and. And you're like, yeah, cool, this one's done. Oh, the next one. And, you know, you use it to relax. You don't just go, oh, this is a chore. Like, it's just a part of the process, um, is the way I think about it at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, all right. So, the head fits on in between where those grooves are. Like so. Um, and so then now, line up the hole, give it a bit of a push, and there we go. So that is Necro Warrior done. And that took probably about 20, 30 minutes, but you know, I'm a bit more pedantic in terms of how I'm cleaning it, so quite happy with that. Um, yeah. Hope you got something out of that, man. Hope that was helpful for you. Um, you know, in, in being able to now go and do your own stuff. So I'm just gonna clean up a touch and then I'll transition back to paint up. Yeah, no worries, man. It's all good. All right. Well, I'm going to get back to painting these uh, Death Watch. So I've just got the, the uh, metal touch up on this dude. All right. Yeah, that should be enough. Shouldn't need any more than that. Oh. No, nah, nothing important on my phone. All right, so this is where I'm probably gonna use the, the finer detail brush a bit more. So. Just get up and along that inside spot.
one small piece and then see that's done so that's one part of this model touched up still got a couple more to go but shouldn't take me too long all right we'll do the storm bolter next that's probably going to be just as easy there's one two three four colors there as well which is the black, the gold, the metal, and the blue. So we'll start off with the blue, because that'll impact it the most, which is on the gold. So again, just getting a small amount of paint out, because there's not a huge area that I need to cover. And we just want to get a nice even coat over where the gold is on the gun casing. So that it's, it cleans it up and it's nice and sharp. Hey, Central Anton, thanks for the following, man. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm working on some uh, Death Watch Space Marines at the moment, my man. I just helped uh, Lakifa put together a... Uh, you know, I showed him how to put together a, a Necron uh, Warrior. Just some tips and trips there, and tips and tricks using my words um and now i'm just getting back to painting up the death watch as the stream title's got you should always stay hydrated up whilst you're um painting as well so thanks for following my man really appreciate it i've got my stuff in sub assembly so that's why i'm only working on one piece at a time so this guy being a storm bolter um you know bring it up a bit further there we go nice man what are you scratch building nice so you're planning on you yeah planning on playing the new um sons of baymat or behemoth, or however you pronounce it. Nice. There was a post by Warhammer Community, I think it was today, where the some of the studio guys got their hands on the kit, and they were working on um, working on it. And one of them had did done this like Nurgle one with like its guts hanging out and being all over this the place. 
Um, so if you're looking for some inspiration uh, for some ideas, that might be another spot you could go with as well for some conversions. Yeah. Yeah, didn't they only just release today or they're up for pre-order today? Um, something along those lines. But yeah, no, those models do look sick and they're huge. Like, they are literally... Ah, so they were pre-order last week or they were released last week? Yeah, right. So. Now, personally, I'm a I'm a high elf guy. The Sigma, well, back before it was Sigma, I should say. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Like they definitely deserve it. Um So yeah, for me, I was I was a high elf player in eighth edition fantasy. So ah, you've been a part of it a long time, man, longer than me. So yeah, great to hear that they finally gave you what you were after. Yep, yep. <laughs> For sure, man. Because there was, there was only a handful of armies that you would be able to use giants in in fantasy from memory. There was Empire, um, Ogre Kingdoms, and Chaos. So I think, yeah, I think those were the ones, from memory at least, that they could be played in. But that's testing my knowledge, considering that fantasy got nuked, what, four or five years ago now? But yeah. What are you using for the scratch build? Like, what components? I'm just going to close my window, I'll be a sec. Yeah, yeah, okay. But, yeah. I hardly saw them when I did play Fantasy. So... Uh, I think I have to approve it, but yeah, feel free. Yeah, yeah, cannons particularly. There's a lot of cannons around. Um, so. Alright. Let me, um, let me send you a whisper and you can send it to me privately.
Oh, yeah. There you go. And yeah, cannons cannons were a bit dumb. Like, just how strong they were. And you would normally always see an Empire army with at least two. Even dwarf cannons, you'd at least see two. Sometimes you might have to do this and just grab your paint and put it back in a single spot. Yeah, nice man. Definitely a work in progress. But I like how you've got the giant next to it for a reference. <laughs> it's good work. Yeah, I like, I think I've got like four bolt throwers for my elves, but yeah, I just never, I never actually liked the single bolt. It, I just wasn't a fan of firing off a single bolt. Um, whether it was the rules or, you know, I didn't. You know, see the effectiveness. It's just, yeah, personal preference. But yeah, no, I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah. And then you just saw, like, you know, I'm not sure about what you saw in more 8th edition, you know. A lot of players in my area were playing Chaos. Like, and so it was pretty much Chimera for days. Yep. Purple Sun, lots of fun. That was... I, I did enjoy a good purple sun, but there was only uh, specific times where I'd take that. Because I knew how uh, rude it would be. Rude or rude it can be. So. But yeah. Everyone's got their own preference. Um, in, in terms of what spells they would use, or what weapons... For me, I was actually a Laura Life guy. That was my preference. I, I prefer to use, um, you know, the, the classic Dwellers Below, if I if I manage to get it on my Archmage. But it's just, I found a lot of value for my Elves in life. Yeah. Yeah, Laura Death was pretty meh. Like, at least for elves, the two that were really good that I found from playing was Lore of Life and Lore of Shadow. Those two were, like, the best that I found for what I would run. Um, and, you know, for the most part, I'd see most other players sticking to those. Maybe Lore of Beasts as well had some good stuff, but for the most part it was just Lore of Life, Lore of Shadow.
tell you what. Yeah, I, I never really went down that hole with my high elves, even though, you know, I, I'd, I'd run a level 4 mage quite easily, but I was not a fan of doing that to my opponents, and, you know, it was I, I didn't necessarily play tournaments, I played more in a casual setting, so, um, but yeah, that was, that was why I uh, opted for more stuff like don't get me wrong like purple sun was was great the one thing that you know kind of i think turned me personally off it was just the range there was only 12 inches and then it was random direction so unless i could guarantee that range and of course i wasn't a fan of taking dragons at that point um so taking a archmage on dragon would Yeah, right, that's rough, man. Like, you want a good balance of casual and tawny, I'd say. That way players get to experience, you know, playing against harder players if they want to learn and want to improve. Or if they just want to have fun, they've got, you know, chill players to play with as well. Like, you know, at least, you know, that's what I found. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was the other way. Like, there was a lot of... There, there was some ca uh, a lot of casual players and only a couple of tournament players. So... But those tournament players were dedicated. Like, full-blown dedicated to the scene. So... But yeah, again, depends on the area. Alright. So... We finished the storm bolts, so that's the right arm done. Next up, the main torso. The main body of the dude. So this is gonna be a lot of black touch-ups. Yeah, nah, that's just no fun. Like, I understand that, that people enjoy tournaments, right? But players should know and learn, if they don't, how to tone down their lists and how to tone down their experience so it's a bit, so it's a bit more fun for other people. In my opinion, at least. Um, but, you know. Everyone has their opinion. Personally, that's what I believe. Um, you know, heck, I'm even experiencing that with my local 40k community. Um, but there are some people that just don't know how to tone things down. Um, so. It's unfortunate that that's the way it was for you, man. I hope Age of Sigma hasn't turned into being like that for you as well. Nah, that's good to hear, man. I'm glad that it's having a positive impact on your local area. And that it's helping recover the scene. What, are, what other armies are you playing for Age of Sigma?
So I have a bad habit of leaning to the left when I paint. Because that's where I paint when I'm not on camera. So I've got to get used to having it a bit more centered so you guys can actually see. Nice, man. So it seems like you got a good mix of stuff um, that you're working on uh, as well, which is always nice to break things up. This guy's getting there. So sometimes with the, the touch-ups, you've just got to go over areas that even don't need it just because you've got one little part of that section and you don't want to go over it where you then end up providing a thinner, you know, you've got a thicker coat in one spot and not a thinner coat in the other. So it needs to remain consistent. Thanks for joining me, guys, on the on your Saturday afternoon. Hope you guys are having a good day as well.
That's the problem with the touch-ups on the main dude, is that it requires a lot of black. So, and it takes the time to do it. That's the bottom half of his body done, which is good. Time for the top half where all the detail is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get that, Sentinel. I get that. But sometimes you just gotta hook straight in. That's what I've been doing most of this year. I uh, have a massive backlog. And so I was just like, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna start. And once you start and chip away at it, that's, uh, yeah, just the best way to do it. Hour here, hour there. And take your time. Don't rush yourself. So. At least that's what I do for my 40k models. Like, to be honest, I've procrastinated most of this month, um, painting-wise. I have have four other units on my schedule that I've been wanting to paint, and I just haven't had the, the desire. Which happens, you know? And sometimes it's good to t take some time off, take some time away. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair enough. Um, but sometimes, you know, one of the podcasts I listen to, they talk about, you know, there's in some cl painting classes that they go to, um, there's this thing that they do that's called the ugly phase. And any project, and I think this has to do with building as well, uh, any project will have that. Um, you know, that it's, you know, you're not particularly happy with it. Um, you know, but you've just got to trust yourself. Be like, no, I can, I can get it there. Um, you know, and work on it and spend the time doing things right, not trying to rush it or anything. Um, so yeah, no, I reckon you can do it, man. You just got to persevere. Just, you know, if you need to take a break, leave it for a bit. Um, you know, come back with a fresh idea or you know uh, you know just yeah sometimes a break might be all you need I've definitely found that with times
Alrighty, I'm getting there with this guy. It's, it's taken a bit, but, you know, it's worth it. It is definitely worth the progress. Now it's getting up to the backpack and the harder spots on it. I'm going to need more black. He's getting there. And this guy's got the gold. He's got no blue. The black, the metal. Red. And leather. So one more colour than what the other two needed. But the black is what, I, what needs the most work on this guy at this moment in time. end up needing my character brush soon. And that's the newer detail one I don't want that character. done the backpack in terms of the black it's just maybe a couple more spots that I need to hit and then done I think I've got his helmet and then that's it for the black touch-ups so not too much
ready. This is the toughest part on the helmet, is trying not to get it into the eye slit. But also get it in a, in a spot how it's uniform. Now time for the character brush. Now I use this around the back of the backpack where the vents are on the lower part, just because they're a bit finicky to get into, um, in terms of like right in there. Plus the longer brush means I can have a little bit more control, I find, in those areas. So I'm going to start it outside and kind of weasel the brush into the spot I want. And it gets a little bit of black where I don't want it, but that's the phase we're in in terms of doing the touch-ups. So that's that part done on him. So you can see he's a bit better in terms of that. Uh, if I bring him up a bit, should hopefully autofocus. There we go. So it's a bit better in terms of the details. Just even that black helped clean it up a lot. Thanks, man. It's taking some time. But it's always good to every so often just stand up and stretch. Oh. Because then you're not hunched over for an extended period of time. And crack goes the back. Oh. I think it's good progress. Mm. All righty. So Keep the black handy, because there will probably come a time where I might need it. I'm going to move on to the gold. Now, I'm going to use a fine detail brush for this guy. Um, I 
hate having all the paint gunk underneath the lip. It's just frustrating. There's not too much gold on him. I'm using Retributor Armor for this guy. Compared to the bronze that I was using earlier. So. Three more spots of gold to touch up. I do have one spot of black that I need to do, but I'll do that last. Um, so. This greave is particularly annoying because there's a the angle of the leg makes it quite difficult to get into. getting there. He's also just shy of 25 degrees in here. So... My paint's drying a bit quicker than normal, but that's gonna continue to be a problem as it starts to get warmer here. That's the gold done. Yeah, cool. It solidified over the top a little bit, which I know means it's a bit too warm in here. I'm gonna open this window a little bit again. Hopefully that'll help some airflow. Alright. Alrighty, next up, we'll, yeah, we'll hit, actually no, actually yeah, we'll hit the middle next. There's not much left in this pot of lead belt shop, but I've had this for a while, so, eventually paint does run out, so. the fine detail brush again. Now I'm 
and start here. Alright, there is a lot of metal on this dude, so this part will take a while. This guy's getting done nice and quick.
All right. The most annoying part is almost done on this guy. And that's the, the bullets on the front. Always painful. There's one more part that I just need to touch up on the inside. Start with that. And just around those vents. A few other spots. And then he's done in terms of the metal touch-ups. But he's definitely getting there. And I've still got the knife too. So I'll do the knife now. May as well. That's the back vents done. Hydrate the paint a little bit because it needs it. And time to hit the blade in that background. done. Just got one little part of this bullet up the back here to go. Cool. Alright, that's all the metal done. Actually, there's one more part I missed. Uh, where are you? I remember hitting it. There we go. 
leave the red till last. Then I've got the leather to do. And then... Then he will be pretty much ready for washes. Except I've still got the shield to go. And the shield is the biggest pain in the ass that there is. That's the brown done. I've just got red and a little bit of black left.
Alrighty. So that is the touch-ups there done on this dude. It's all nice and clean, nice and sharp. I just did the last bit of black on that, uh, on the uh, combat knife on his back. So he's all finished in terms of his touch-ups. Now, time for the shield. And this thing is detailed as all heck, and it's going to take me a lot of time. So, there is literally three colours that I need for this. Black, uh, gold, and silver. And metal, sorry, my, my, it's four. So, there's a trick with this one. I don't do the, um, I don't do the black first. I do the silver. I do tend to enjoy using my finer detail brush for this shield part. And it's more or less along the inside where the gold is on the lip of where the silver meets it. Wherever it meets up with the gold. Got to come in from the top when doing this internal part, which means I'm going to get some silver on the gold, but that's okay. It doesn't matter too much at this point. Uh, I'm able to go back when I'm going to do the gold touch-ups to do that, to touch that section up. So. And I'll touch it up very carefully because I've already touched up the silver. I don't want to go back and touch up the silver a second time. But because this shield is just so detailed in terms of the lettering on the internals.
that's the shield part done. I then also have to go and do the small little pauldron piece underneath, which is there, and the shoulder pad. Sounds like a motorbike's back from earlier. <laughs> and touching up the silver underneath there. Yeah, just getting through this guy, just touching up where the gold it meets the silver on the shoulder pad. I think I do need the red for this too. Alright, so that's the silver done for this part. Hope you guys are having a good afternoon chat. Just hanging out with me. Plus I work on some death watch. These guys are coming along nicely. Um, so now that we've done the silver, now we do the black. So we'll do the front of the shield first. And touch that up and then we'll go on to the back of the shield and do the same thing there now it won't be necessarily it'll, it'll cause me to do some more touch up to the metal but that's okay because at the end of the day there's stuff on there that we need to eventually touch up anyway all right
this is the this is the tough side this little section right in here that I'm about to hit because I need to get it where I want to get it nice and clean perfect grab the detail brush and we'll do this little part here on the shield So now that that's nice and flat, we'll do the same thing we just did on the other side. Get the fine detail brush, and we'll go right along that internal edge, making sure that it's nice and even. It's not impacting on the lettering. It still distinguishes where it starts. Cool. So there's the shield. It's looking good. Might bring it a bit up a bit further for you guys so hopefully it'll focus in there we go black still drying but you can see there um, hopefully you can see that little bit right in there where it's black right up against the silver so that's almost that section well, that is that section done apart from the external parts so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this upper piece and do the exact same thing. Starting off with the detail, uh, fine detail brush, or continuing with it I should say, just because there was that very tiny part where I'm painting or like just before, just down here, which is easy to get with a smaller brush. And again, same thing as over on the other side. I don't care if I get black on the gold because I'm going to be going back through and touching up the gold anyway.
So that's the interior of the black done. Let's get some of this black back out. And what I'm going to do is water the crap out of it. I'm very controlling it. Controlled. Just going to glaze the top. Just so it has a nice, flat, even finish. Across everywhere I used it. At least the inside of the shield. So that should hopefully help it dry nice and flat. Hey Rob Baser, how you going? Roy Baser, sorry. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good Saturday. Hope you're having a good day, my man. Alright, now needed some more black, so now I'm gonna do the outside touch ups of the black. And this is where it gets finicky. So just going through, getting the, the edging on the outside of the gold this time. So that it's nice and even. And that's already a huge improvement. Um, so. some more black on that. That needs a bit of a thicker coat because I was seeing some gold through there. There we go. Cool. So, just need a touch up. That is now clean and crisp.
Alrighty. Just getting this done. So that's the black on the exterior done, just not on the angled, which can be the next part. So I don't need the fine detail brush for this part. But probably do want to change how this is attached to the actual blue tack. So. This is the problem. It should have come off by now. So I'm just trying to reset how I've got this guy set up on here. Now, stick it on from the shoulder pad, so hopefully I can still hit the black parts I need to, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to very carefully hit the angled parts of the shield with this watered down black, just so then... It's uh, got a nice, even coat. Alright, so that's the bottom now this is where I gotta be careful because of the silver to do the underside and this is where it can get a bit messier but not too messy still want to control it don't want to be acting as though I'm doing a base coat
that's the part of the touch ups on the other side done. Just gonna keep on going. So it's a bit hard sometimes to get the right angle to get the black into where I need it to, but this is effectively like doing a black base coat. Like what I was doing on the actual vet himself. Because there are spots where the metal or the gold do cover where the black needs to be. Alright, time to change. So I'm going to be changing over to my um, insane detail. But it's going pretty well. We're getting it there. Now that I'm able to get a bit more control with this smaller brush, just touching up. back to the detail brush to continue what I was doing for the rest until I get to the other side. Now this is where it gets hard using it like this because I need to get into that top spot. Now I'm going to change it again. I'm going to do it on the actual face itself. So then I can actually get into that spot. This guy right under here. So I'm about to, I'm going to need to swap brushes again. 
in a sec because I need the character brush to get me some extra length and some extra ability to get into a harder to reach spot. Time for character brush. So this guy is going to enable me to get into a, a better spot than I was. Going to be able to with the other one. I just need to get the paint out of that spot. mind about the gold because I need to I've got to go back and touch up the gold anyway that's not a problem it's the silver I'm trying to be very careful of I'm going to have to do the silver again now. But that's okay. I thought it might happen. I was just going to hope and try to avoid it. But sometimes there is no avoiding it. So, I do my best. Brilliant thing about painting, I can always go back and fix it. Alright. Oh man. Jeez, it's already that time. Goodness me. Alright. 
I'll definitely be able to get the touch-ups done, probably the washes as well. It's just the gold that's going to be the pain. So, let's go hit this silver a second time, touch up where I did just mess up. And then... We'll go from there. That's touched up. Salvage what's left. We'll keep it going. Hope you guys are enjoying the stream, just hanging out with me on a Saturday afternoon. Oh. Alrighty. We're getting it done. Next up is, uh, I think it's going to be the gold, which is going to be in a fair number of places, but I think I might do the metal first because that's in less. Okay. Alrighty, slowly getting there with this guy. I'm painting in the bottom left hand corner of my screen. I should have it more central for you guys, so you can actually see what I'm doing. I have a very bad habit of that, just from painting in general. Sorry about that.
almost got this part done. It's just very hard in that exact spot because of where the arm's attached. I think in future I'm going to leave the arm off when I go to paint Storm Shield. The Storm Shields for the Death Watch so I can actually get into the back there. Because that's a pain in the neck. To get around it. So yeah. Got a couple more touch-ups on the, the metal to go. And then we'll transition to the gold. Which will take some time. I think I'm going to leave that top right one. It's a bit too close to that arm um, to risk. Um, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to call that done for the metal. Now for the gold. This is where it starts to get very, very hard. And not difficult in terms of like where I'm painting. But difficult in terms of control. So... We'll see how it goes. It should be fine. Hey, Ezra Wolf. I'm working on some Death Watch Space Marines, so I'm just painting a Storm Shield uh, for it at the for one of them at the moment. He's magnetized, so I'm just doing the touch ups um, currently, and working on uh, hopefully having this guy potentially uh, washed and highlighted today as well. So. Just hanging out, listening to some tunes, chatting with some of the other guys. I did also uh, help. Um, it was um, Low Keeper. I helped him um, sh show him how I would assemble a, a Necron Warrior. So from Indominus, um, as he just picked up the Elite stuff today. So helped him out with that as well. Um, which I'm more than happy to do. So, but yeah. Just got the last uh, colour to highlight, uh, not highlight, um, touch up on the shield right now, um, which is going to be the uh, Retributor Armour Gold to get it all done. So I've just got to reposition it onto the shoulder pad again. Have you been working on anything else yourself, Ezra? Yeah, nice, man. Good to hear. So, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to fire away. I'm more than happy to answer. I don't play Age of Sigma myself, but, you know, if it's hobby related, I could probably help out. Alright. 
No worries at all, man. All right. Sorry, just trying to get very carefully, not screwing up the black that I touched up earlier, but also not screwing up the silver on the inside either. It's one of those delicate parts of this process now. To be honest, it's this that I've been putting off um, in terms of painting. This is what's put me off is because of the storm shields. They're just so detailed. Um, just drives me a little nuts in terms of touch-ups for the gold. Um, just in general. But for the most part, I can get them done. I'll center that a bit better for you guys. It's getting there. Alright, so that's the inside part. Time for the outside. So that's one side done in terms of the uh, touching up the gold on that little part. Now I've got to do just this small touch up around the coils. I'll have to do it on the underneath as well, but I'll do all the top side first. It'll just be a bit easier. This is the one of the the circles on the top corners and then the bottom middle are the toughest ones to touch up because of that little black in between. So if I bring it up a bit closer for you guys, it should focus. So just in there on either side I've had to touch up the black. And so it makes it a little bit harder to uh yeah to touch up cleanly without causing any problems but i've managed to do it pretty successfully here um, i just hope that i'm just as successful on the other side of it
need to get some more paint out now. Next batch loaded up. That's another section done, it's a little bit rougher. I might just quickly grab some black and do a quick touch up. Just so it's nice and clean. So. All right. Let's keep on going with the gold. That's the top of the coil done. And then we'll patch up on the inside, just make sure it wasn't too much silver. Control that. Yep, cool. Now, time for the outside. That's the edging done on the gold. Next up, I've got to do the internal. So that um, inquisition symbol, then I've got here and here, and then the undersides there. So, still be a fair bit of work, but this gold's drying quick on the palette. So I'm gonna have to move it just so I can get access to the actual paint. Yeah, thanks man. It's, yeah, it's a long process in terms of um, the touch-ups that I've been working on. Like I've been doing the touch-ups probably about 
consistently for about two hours, maybe two and a half. So they take time. But, you know, you chip away at it, you get it done. So. Getting there. And I'm gonna need more gold. That's the Inquisition symbol done. Thank goodness for that. About time. Uh, now, I just need to... Oh, that could have been bad. Touching up the underside, I know it's going to be hard for you guys to see.
All right. Two more spots. Then we can do the red. And call the part, this part of the process done. down so I can get the full I'll just put them all like that though alright and then All right, that's the shield done. So, so you can see it. There's that. So, one more thing though, the red, and it's in a very tiny spot. I only need a small amount of it. There we go. That's done. Now yeah, it's fully done, I can say that. <laughs> Just need that red eye. So, hopefully that'll come up. Ah, oh, thanks Ezra. So yeah. So that is the tie shops done on this dude. Thank goodness for that. Three hours later. I know Lakeith has been with us the, with me most of the time, I'm pretty sure. Or all of the time. Um, thanks, man. Thanks, Ezra. It does. Um, I'll show you the rest. So, you've got the, uh, the actual... Let's put that there. The Marine. And then the Arm and Storm Bolter. They go together. Because they're magnetized. So. Time for the washers. Um, which is going to add some nice tinting that we want to it. Um, so. We're going to start with the red actually. Because it's literally. A... Yeah I do. I do. I magnetize most of them. Um, it's mainly because the kits have so many pieces. Like, so the Death Watch come with like, I don't know, 20 different options um, that you could give them. It's just like, 
Okay. There's, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that you could choose from. And I don't like particularly being, uh, you know, wasteful and going, well, I'm paying 65 bucks for this kit, at least in terms of Australian dollars. And not getting my value out of it. So... That's why I magnetize most of the time. Yeah, yeah. If, but also you got to take into account that some models aren't as easy to magnetize as Space Marines are. Marines are super easy. Like, the hole, you literally just drill, once it decides to focus on here, you literally just drill it and... Uh, you know, you do that on both sides and it's easy. There are some models where if they don't have a large enough surface like that, you won't be able to do that kind of thing with. So I'm not sure about the Carriage on Overlord models. I haven't seen the them actually in person. Um, but if you're able to do it, man, definitely, like, I recommend it. Um, because, you know, you're paying a premium for the models and you're only being able to give them one outfit. Like, if you want the versatility, if you want to test out other stuff, magnetizing is a great way to go, in my opinion. Alright, so we've got a couple of spots we need to do for Draken Half Shade. Let's move those guys off. We'll start with these two. So. Now, actually, before I do that, I need to reference one of the guys I've actually already completed. So I've got my cases underneath my hobby desk. So, hey Bryce, how you going, man? Hope you're having a good day. guys are liking the content feel free to drop a follow really appreciate it yeah dude sometimes it can get you like that my man um so we're working on some warhammer 40k uh space marines at the moment particularly uh they're called the death watch um so just for reference this is one guy i've actually fully completed so far uh, and what I'm referring to is how I've done the shield. I, I don't want to go over too much how dark um, the silver. I don't want to do it too dark, but I still want to go over it. Um, so I'm just referencing that to see how dark that is compared to the shoulder pad. Seems pretty standard for that color. So, But yeah, now nah, Bryce, painting and this hobby is... I, I It's really relaxing. It's really fun. Um, some even All say, right. Hey, Bryce, dude, thanks for the follow, my man. Um, but yeah, no, it's really cathartic, really relaxing. I, I love it. So, I've been doing this for over, oh gosh, coming up to 15 years I've been in this hobby. So, I definitely can attest to the fact that it is a great hobby to be a part of um so yeah so I'm just going to start with the shoulder pad and putting the the Drakenhof nightshade over the interior so I'm not doing it over the the exterior or the inquisition symbol on the shoulder pad with the gold I'm doing it over the lettering and what this does this allows the uh lettering to have some depth to it but also allows the rest of it to pop off the um, the actual back of it, so it's not all just really bright. So you probably can't see most of it because it's just hidden behind the shield. That's okay. So that's the kind of look we're going for, if I can get it to focus. It's 
that's what that's where we're at and what we're looking for. So that's for the shoulder pad. There's that little piece of filigree that I'm going to do just underneath as well. Give it a little bit of colour. But I don't want to oversaturate it like I have done. So I'll grab some of that off. That's a bit better. And then put it back up and just add a touch more where it needed. And then just do that underside. So that you can get the color tinting you want for that blue. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to do the shield. As I said, too dark. So what I'll do is I'll empty the brush and I'm gonna go lightly over it just to uh, get rid of some of that excess so it's not really dark. And then take it up and reuse it up the top. And then go back down and then reload from what I've already used. So this will probably take two coats. So I'll probably let it dry and then I'll come back. And... Keep on going with it. I did get a little bit of blue on the gold, but that's okay. That'll get its own wash that won't have the same impact in terms of the color that a blue would on it. And there is a little spot that I need to get it into. There we go. All right. So that is what the shield looks like with the blue. Thanks, Bryce. Too easy, my man. I, uh, my next stream will be next Saturday. So uh, I won't be painting, though. Um, I'll be at a event that I'm running, and I'll be streaming the games um, for, for this... Uh, for Warhammer 40k, so it'd be good. But yeah, catch you there, my man. Alright, so I need to load up on some more blue. Or more blue wash, I should say, so I can do the Storm Bolter. Just the casing of the Storm Bolter this time. So, we'll get the excess off. So whilst that dries, we'll do the casing of the Storm Bolter. Then we'll come back and we'll keep on going on the shield and do another coat if it needs it. But I'm not sure if it will. I don't think it will. But we'll see how it looks. Um, so yeah, just going to put a bit of a wash. This just darkens the blue a little bit. And means that, you know, some of the recesses will be a bit darker. And... Now, it will impact the metal a little bit, but again, that's going to get its own wash, so it shouldn't do it too badly. Um, but I'm still a bit aware of how that will um, 
impact the black wash that I'll give it after the blue wash has dried. So, shield's still drying a little bit. I'll leave it a bit longer. So, I'll put the blue back, because we won't be needing that again, until we need to do the shield. So, we've done the red. Um, then we've got... What we'll do to the bronze is we'll do the black wash as well. Um, and we've got the gold to do. So we'll do the gold on the main guy, the main body. So I do a seraphim sepia wash over the retributor armor, which gets a really nice kind of... I don't know how to describe it, but it's a nice, um, rich, deep gold that we'll end up with. So again, getting that small detail, that detail brush, and just, it doesn't matter if it gets on the black too much, because it, you know, the gold will stand out a lot more than the wash being on the black. So I'm just being a little heavy with it. But that's what gives it its effect as well. Alright. There we go, that's done. And then just this back one. So that's gold done there. Now we're gonna hit the gold on the storm bolter. So the blue has dried around it, which is good. So we'll just hit the center first. And then very carefully we'll go around the sides. Then the blue's done on the shoulder pad and the little filigree part on the elbow. So I'm just gonna hit that with the seraphim sepia now as well. Just being very careful. Right. Hey Zoro, thanks for the follow, man. Hope you guys are having a good afternoon or morning or evening or wherever you are in the world. It's going well. It's going well. I pushed through all the touch-ups that I needed to do on this guy. Uh, so now I'm getting to the washes, which is, which is going well. 
Um, how about you, my man? How's your afternoon been? Yeah, for sure, man. Zenith and 40k you want to chat with me about? Fire away. I've uh, been playing 40k for approximately 10 years, so... Uh, yeah, more than happy to have a chat and, you know, whilst I paint, share my thoughts. So, yeah. What armies do you play for 40k? Yeah, I have seen the Hex Mark. Bit of an interesting dude. From memory, he's it's the dude with six pistols. Um, oh, nice. Nice, man. I, I have tried to play Orcs. They're just not my speed, unfortunately. But I am starting up Necrons. Because, um, you know, I, got in, I was lucky enough to get Indominus um, from my local store. So I definitely will be starting them up at some point soon. But yeah. Uh, I haven't seen the rules for it fully. I know it's got the six pistols that are like 12 or 18 inch range. Um, but yeah, apart from the preview, which I've only had a light read of, um, I haven't seen too much of it, man. So if you want to let me know what it's fully about, uh, you know, go for it. Wow, that's pretty good. Um, hitting on a 2 plus, being strength 6, it'll, it'll wound most things that aren't vehicles on a 3. Uh, yeah, dude, that's... Um, that is a hidden, hidden gem. How many points, out of curiosity? Oh, that's insane. For 75 points, I'm guessing he's T5. He's probably, what, four or five wounds? Because he'd be on his own, right? Or can he be taken in units? Oh, gosh. Okay. And it can fire as its pistols in its own turn in close combat. Uh, when it's still in close combat because it's pistol weapons. I think you're onto something here, man. Like, that is that is a really good unit. Um, I would say. Yeah. You just take... You take a standard battalion, you take three of them. Um, and you just reactionary drop to anything that deep strikes in, right? And you just go, okay, cool. You just bop the unit with three of them. Those models die, they get shots again. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's, 
the one that hits on 2 plus in Overwatch. So you spend the CP, Overwatch him. Hey, Jensen, how you going, man? Welcome back. Um, you, you hit the, um, you pop that strat. You're hitting on twos in Overwatch. With that ability, if you kill anyone, you get more shots. Like, that's just insane. Um, it's good to hear, Jensen. Yeah, I'm going well, my man. I'm going well. Just uh, doing another painting stream, just hanging out, chatting with uh, Zoro about the uh, some of the new Necron stuff. Oh, it's not base. That's insane. So you pay one CP, it overwatches on a 2+. Whew. That thing is insane. I'm so down. For that um that's got yeah that'll have some legs in terms of being able to be used for sure there's 75 points yeah i think i think you'll see that So we're talking about the um, dude that's the six pistol Necron guy. The hex mark, I think it is. Let me have a look. Um, he he yeah, hex mark. Yeah, it might might get FAQ'd into Oblivion, it might not. Um, it might get reduced. You know, the fact is that Overwatch is a 1 CP thing now, so... Uh, you know, you, you can see how it goes, but... Yeah. Still, 1 in the list is really solid, I would say. Um, if not more than that. Just based on that, uh, the ability to deep strike once a unit's deep struck, to be able to go in and go, yep, yeah, cool, no thank you, uh, models die from a unit, and then they go, yeah, too easy, man. Yeah, Jensen, we all have those days, unfortunately, um, where the Wi-Fi just craps it. I've, I've definitely experienced that myself, unfortunately, at times. But you know what? You, you deal with it. It's it's just the way sometimes it is. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no. All good, man. All good. I'm definitely not getting any warning saying the stream's dropping frames. So, I would be otherwise. So just applying the black wash to uh, the, the bullet shell that's on his the rim of his shoulder pad. Just make sure I'm not getting any on there. Ah, good to hear. All right, so that's looking good. What I'm gonna do, guys, give me a minute. I'm gonna take a quick break. And then I'll be back. And uh, to resume, I'll be back maybe a minute, not too much longer.
Sorry about that, guys. Decided to uh, go fill up my water bottle at the same time because um, I was completely out of water. So it is a bit warm in here. Um, but yeah. Nah, all good, Zoro. I'm back now. So just had to go to the bathroom and um, fill up my water. So and I just decided to throw half my brushes across the room. <laughs> of which I forgot most of them. Oh, dude, that sucks. Is there any particular reason why, Jensen? But yeah, no, glad you can hang out with us for a little bit, though, man. Oh, it also re-rolls ones. Yeah, no, that's, um... That is strong. That's really good. Oh, that's fair, man. That's fair. Laborers have got a... And plumbers have got jobs that do need... They do need to do sometimes. So. Alright, where was I? I was up to doing the metal. So, I'm going to flip this over so I can hit the metal that's on the back of the shield as well. Um, and then... Yeah, too easy, man. I'm not sure how much longer I'll be on. It's almost 6 o'clock my time. Um, I probably won't be on maybe another hour or so at most. Um, but yeah. Oh, gosh. Has living metal as well? Uh, I think that thing's going to be getting a points increase. Not a not an FAQing. Um, Zoro, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if its points at least went up by 33%, by another 25. Um, so 100, if not, maybe more, but... Yeah, that's insane. Gets a wound back every turn, yeah. Fire pisses in close combat, like... That thing just seems really good. So, like, I can definitely see see the uh the the hidden gem that you believe it to be, my man. Was there anything else in the codex that you found to be uh just as good or like a, a really good choice? Oh, gosh. That's... That's insane. Strength neg 2. Strength 6, neg 2. Whew. Yep, I definitely think you'll see Necron players taking 3. Um, so... That's just... That's strong. Yeah, I did play... So I played a, a game in my local league against Necrons with my Death Watch this past Tuesday. Um, and he... The guy I played with was running a unit of 10 um, with, with sword and board. The entire unit. All sword and board. So, uh, yeah. That was, like... It was decent, but being Death Watch, I just kind of did what death watch do and just went cool um and like just went gun goes burr at them um and then so i took i think in one shooting phase with my dreadnought uh, with a venerable dreadnought and a unit of i think at that point it was maybe uh eight death watch standard death watch veterans I took him down to, I think it was like eight guys, and then 
Then the Vendred went in and went ham and took out another four. He had four Lich Guard left before he struck back. <laughs> yeah, Marines are the OP of the OP right now. I, I'm not going to deny that at all. Um... Oh gosh, so no invuln against uh, Satan shards. Or at least the Nightbringer. That's crazy good. And I just realized I've missed a spot. I need the red on the uh, handle of the Storm Shield. I'm just going to quickly get some out and do it with the detail. Yeah, tell me about it. What, what's good about the Doomstalker? I was uh, considering converting one, actually getting a couple of Doomsday Cannons from like Bits Retailers and converting one of the two that I've got from Indominus into being one. Oh, gosh. Yeah, right. Okay. So that's got some strength to it. What's the range on its gun normally? Okay, so it's got the Doomsday Cannon. Cool. So, yeah, I reckon that'd be a good conversion. Like, it wouldn't be too hard to do it from the Reanimator um, out of um, the Indominus box set, I reckon. Um, the, oh, whatchamacallit, the dude that, the Scorpex, the Scorpex Destroyers, try those, my man, they, uh, the guy that I played against ran three, and they did okay, with a Scorpex Lord, though, they go even better, um, yeah, Zoro, that's, uh, I definitely agree with that. Necrons have had it rough the past few years. Um, ever since 7th edition, I would say. Yeah, the Commander Edition Jensen will have that the the um score effect destroyers in there. Um so 
that should hopefully help you out to build you out a little bit more in terms of your close combat abilities. I will need that red wash, red wash again now, but I don't need the blue. Yeah, sick. That, yeah, that's what I was talking about, Zoro. Like, that would be insane. Um, I would, hmm... Yeah. Um. I don't know, my man. How much does the command boss cost? Like, altogether, what does the command boss co box cost you? Because that would be, like, I'd be able to give it some rough idea if I knew what that box total was worth. Oh, I mean, like, I know you're wanting to just sell off the um, marines from it, but what is the total cost? Generally, you do about half, um, if not maybe 35% if you're not giving him the rules. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, um, 15 would be about right. Um, maybe that could be a bit steep, but yeah, you're in the right ballpark between 10 and 15 sounds good. Uh, all good, Zoro. Thanks for hanging out with us, my man. And thanks for the follow. Really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll catch you sometime soon. So I trans transposed all of the uh, other black wash from the small pot that I had left into the big pot because it would all fit now. So I've only got one pot of... Um... Yeah. Like, I'd agree with your pricing, Jensen. Um, just personally. Like, you know, they're easy to build stuff. Like, it's not necessarily like... You know, you don't want to make a profit off it, right? Like, you're just trying to... You know, want him to get into the game, want him to get him to start. Like, I'd say, yeah, what you've done, what you've suggested is a fair, fair price, in my opinion. Um, around that mark would be fine. So.
Alright. Now I'm going to do the gold on the shield. And then the washes will be done for the most part on this dude. Because the black washes have been done. The red's now done. Then we get up to another fun part. The highlighting. So, we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure if I'll get it, a chance to do that today. Oh, it's only, it's only 10 past 6. I should be able to. But yeah. Um. But yeah, thanks, thanks for joining me, guys, this afternoon. It's been uh, great to have you with me as I've been working on uh, the hobby and, and what I've been doing so yeah the cryptex are a bit weird now they've all got their own specific um name for what they do so i'm particularly interested in the uh the I think it's the Chronomancer, the one that gives everyone around him a 5-up uh, invulnerable save. That one's going to be sick. But yeah, you've also got the Technomancers as well. Which I can't remember fully what they do. They're more vehicle orientated, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, dude. Chronomancer's nuts. You stick in with two units, like my, my thinking is, you stick in with two units of 20 warriors with just standard gorse, um, and a ghost arc behind them, and you just literally just stand there, and you just shoot, and you shoot, and you shoot, you would, like, you, you move up, you shoot, like, you know... You're you're in you're a tough as nails front line unit that's gonna take a lot of stuff to get dislodged. Either that or they're gonna have to kill. Oh, too easy, Jensen. Uh, catch you soon, my man. But yeah, as I was saying, yeah, you put um the Chronomancer. With the uh, 20, 20 warriors, the ghost arc, and you just advance that forward. And it'll just hold that center of the field like nobody's business. And it's durable, it's tough, it can weather the fire. It's insane. It is actually insane. So. Yeah. But yeah, no, some of the some of the new Necron stuff is absolutely insane, guys. If you haven't seen any of the previews, I I definitely recommend checking it out. Um All 
All right. So that's the last of the washes done, which is great. That means that all the paints that I had there can now be pushed aside. Now it's time to do a tedious mind numbing part, the edge highlighting. So, but yeah. been great spending hanging out with you guys this afternoon hope you've been enjoying it start with the storm bolter because that's a really easy edge highlight to do and we're using dark reaper for this one over the black so I'm trying to get a nice clean crisp line and then just on the fingers and so then on this side do the same thing exactly like that Hopefully that focuses for you guys. Once I do that, should do. Yeah, there we go. So that's that's what we're aiming for. Across all of them, though. So we'll uh, slowly get through it. Edge highlights do take some time. But they are worth it. Now this part's a little hard because that bolt gun around that's sitting there. Then I've just got to do some small pieces along here. All right. Hey, thanks guys. Thanks for the follow, my man. Really appreciate it. Oh, it's for 3 a.m., man. Thanks, dude. Oh, I'm looking forward to finishing this. Thanks for hanging out with me, my man. Have Hope you have a good night's sleep.
Um, so the, the VOD will stay up on Twitch for 14 days. I'm not sure if I'll get it um, finished tonight, but I'm uh, going to set up my social media stuff for the stream kind of the next week or so. So I'll definitely start posting up stuff of what I finish um, on there as well. Probably primarily just be Facebook. Not sure about Instagram at this point, but we shall see. So, but yeah, it, it will eventually be up on um, up on social media. That's for sure. Alrighty, so that's the edge highlighting done on there. Hey, it decides it wants to autofocus now on that spot. But yeah, so you can see the edge highlighting goes around a bit and it's underneath there. Um, so now, there's only one dude left. The main body of the miniature. Now, I'm going to salvage the... rest of the Dark Reaper that was there, and I'll put a little bit more out. So yeah, as I was saying to some of the guys earlier chat, if you're looking for to watch some 40k games next weekend, and you got nothing to do, pop over to the stream. Um, I'm running a Narrative Crusade event at my local game store, and I'll be streaming uh, one of the tables from that. Um, so yeah, it should be, should be a good event. we got it a little bit of interest being the first crusade event but not too much unfortunately um but there's still enough guys in the rocking up to run it so heck you may even see me play on stream too if i need to but yeah should be a good should be a good event um i'm looking forward to it so yeah It's always the torso that takes the longest with the edge highlighting. Um, 
just because of some of the angles and some of the other stuff as well. It's not the cleanest that I'd like as I'd like. But it still does okay. I'm happy with it, which is the main thing. So. Just as a heads up, guys, I will be jumping off in the next kind of half hour or so. Um, hopefully, I can get this guy done in time. Um, but yeah, the latest I'll be on is going to be 7 o'clock my time, so which is at about 40 minutes. And if we've got enough viewers sticking around, we might go raid another guy that's going to do some more hammer stuff. So you've got similar content to, to continue watching. This is where it gets hard is trying to connect these two edge highlights without screwing it right underneath there. It's getting there. Shouldn't take too much time to get the edge highlighting done. It's just that it's a tedious process because there's so much edges on this dude.
Alrighty. Ah, Zoro. <laughs> Welcome back, man. <laughs> what what is your discovery? <laughs> and the model's progressing, he's getting there. So I'll bring it up a bit further so you might focus in on it a bit better. So I've only done one of the legs. Whoa. Ah, oh, thanks man. And that strat is nuts. How many, is it, it's only one CP as well. That's crazy. That is crazy, dude. Oh, but doing... Doing it with that guy that's, um... Yeah, yeah, I played Death Watch. So that's what these guys are. They're the actual Death Watch veterans. Thanks, man. I, uh... The golds... You know, some people do it very differently. Like, they do more of a darker gold. I like the... The, the brighter gold of the Retributor armor, and then I wash it so it stands out. Not like it doesn't stand out as much, but it's got a lot of depth to it with Seraphim Sepia as the wash. And that's how I generally will um, paint up the gold for these guys. So it's something I'm thinking about doing for my Necrons as well, actually, is doing a similar trick. So yeah, but Death Watch did get a little bit of a, a buff with the Rorata. Yeah, nice, nice, man. I'm thinking of just doing mine as a custom one, so uh, just so I'm, I'm used to painting a lot of custom stuff. Um, just my own, like I got my own Space Marine chapter, you know, Death Watch I'm painting up in my unique way because they're meant to have their entire right, uh, sorry, not right. Their entire left arm is meant to be silver. And I don't do that. I don't enjoy doing that. Um, that's too much, in my opinion. So I just do the shoulder pad. So I, I do kind of custom and I do my own stuff. So I'm just kind of used to that. Oh, gosh. For any model. So yeah, Doomsday Arc. Oh, gosh. That means you do it, you shoot a Doomsday Arc against a Knight, right? And that's just going to auto-wound. Hey, Jensen, welcome back, man. Yeah, so. Not much. Zoro just actually popped up back like maybe a minute before you did, dude, and read what he's just said to you. Um that strat he's talking about is insane.
Yeah, dude. It's it's not. It's absolutely not. I think I'm going to finish off the bottom half of this dude and then I might sign off guys. I'm, I'm feeling a bit fatigued in terms of painting. Um, just in terms of my shoulders. They're starting to really give me some hell. So this guy's almost done. Um, I'll probably pop back on tomorrow. Maybe not for as long of a stream. But I, I will pop back on so I can uh, you know, finish this guy on stream for you guys. Oh gosh, that's insane, Zoro. That's nuts. That's literally nuts. Um, yeah, dude. That's crazy good. That is crazy good. So, where he's at right now is there. I'll put that there. So, highlights getting done. Um... So it's only the bottom half. I've done a little bit of the back as well. Um, but yeah, the entire upper torso I still need to do. Um, but I'm feeling quite fatigued, guys. So I am going to call it there. Um, you know, I want to thank everyone that's, um, you know, giving me a fresh follow today. I really appreciate Zoro and Jensen returning as well. Um, great to hang out with you guys. Love sitting, chatting, and... Um... <laughs> Zoro, yeah. <laughs> He will be. He will get the arms. I'll, I'll, I'll probably be on tomorrow for a, not too long of a stream, maybe an hour or two, uh, to finish him off, maybe do some building as well. Um, and I'll, I'll show him off with the arms as well, um, fully attached, which would be great. Uh, yeah, you too, Zoro. Ah, thanks, man. Thanks. I've only been doing this for a little bit, so uh, it's great to you know have guys like yourself jumping in, having a chat. Love it. Um, but for now, guys, just want to say uh, thanks for watching, uh, and I will catch you guys uh, next time.